Can I just ask everyone quickly, who, uh, by a show of hands, who was here last year? Just checking you're all awake, but also genuinely who you were here last year. So it's about half the room, so that's nice to know there's half new faces. But the reason I ask that is because when we were here this time last year, James actually attended our conference for the first time. And um, after the event, we actually went and we signed a contract between Ascentis and Metaverse. Um, and that's really quite important in context of right now, because when we sat down to sign it, we really knew what we would like to achieve. We weren't quite sure how we were going to get there, but we wanted to know, we wanted to be able to bring something at some point. And obviously we've been able to do that at this conference, which is brilliant. So what we wanted to do was basically bring our two companies together. So at Ascentis, we look for um, long-term partners to make sure that we can work with really like-minded people over a long period of time and to create things that are really meaningful for our customers and our learners. And we were delighted when we came across um, James and Metaverse, who actually were a company that uh, were at the forefront in their field of technology, um, but also had a shared vision in terms of what they wanted to do for learners and really wanted to contribute to the learner experience and applying this incredible technology, which I don't really fully understand. Technology isn't my strong suit, but what I do want and understand is what our learners need and how we really enhance their experience. So for us, it was a perfect combination, actually, of our route to learners and um, Metaverse's partnership with technology and really making sure that we live in a world that technology is everywhere. And obviously there's differing opinions on that, but we can't ignore it. So our students, our teachers, nobody lives in isolation. So the technology exists and we need to make sure that we encapsulate it in the right way that's appropriate, that enhances the learning experience and helps learners on their journey will ultimately as well help them overall in what they want to achieve with their qualification. So endless opportunities with new technology and where we wanted to start. So you'll have heard a few times today um, about ESOL and obviously where Ascentis sit in the ESOL community. We are very privileged to say that we are the number one ESOL provider and we're very humbled to say that we support over 91,000 ESOL learners, which is incredible. So we do really carry and take very seriously a moral obligation to ensure those 91,000 learners each year get the best experience. And we give them the opportunity to access everything we possibly can, which is really where our partnership with Metaverse came in, that we wanted to create something really unique and really special that enabled the opportunity for technology and our ESL qualifications to come together. So I would love to be able to show it to you, but I'm going to leave it to the expert, that is James. So James is going to um, do a quick run through, um, and then I'll come back and to discuss how that, how that might help your learners in the future. So James Pallister from Metaverse. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the introduction. First of all, very dangerous putting a microphone in front of me. Most people think it's a, a lethal weapon because I'm just extraordinarily loud. So hopefully everyone can hear me at the back. Um, and I'm not deafening you. Um, so thank you so much for the introduction. Um, we are absolutely thrilled and delighted to be partnering with Ascentis on the immersive ESOL programs. Uh, some of you may recognize me. I used to work for an English language teaching publisher, used to be in and out of ESOL departments all the time doing training and workshops and things like that. And I've got a real big passion for simulation and how simulation is going to change learning for the better. I'm a big advocate for simulation in gaming. I think it's going to be a revolution in terms of how it affects uh, learning as well. So uh, this partnership, um, I'm hoping is the first of very many programs to come using simulation for the, for the betterment of all. And first of all, a bit about us. So a bit about Metaverse. We're experts in the field of mixed reality and education. What we do differently compared to everyone else is we form and lead partnerships, creating immersive learning solutions with our partners. We provide interactive toolkits to aid personal and tutor assessments, to boost engagement levels, to reduce training costs, and to provide a safe and risk-free area for students to practice. We see ourselves as the reinvention of the classroom, and our mantra is for the sector, by the sector, because the sector literally helps create the content that we produce. In terms of some of the literature behind why 
Immersive learning is at the forefront of a lot of academics' minds at the moment in terms of the new way to learn. Uh, this is a, an article by PwC, four times faster training time using virtual over classroom, one and a half times improved, improved learner attention using virtual over classroom, 80% more confidence using virtual over classroom, and 91% of learners prefer virtual over classroom and e-learning. But there's much, much more research that needs to be done. So we're hoping to work with Ascentis on finding out the exact stats for things like language learners in the future. And in terms of what we do, we've, had a, um, we've alluded to some of the programs that we do. We do ESOL, we do much, much more as well. Healthcare, early years, very into the renewable suite as well. Uh, construction, plumbing, gas, electrical engineering, commerce chef. Um, retrofit, cybersecurity, and we can even do some more crazy stuff with things like embalming as well. So if anyone comes to us with, with an idea, we are all ears, even if it's a bit wacky. And there's, there's loads of jokes I could do about embalming, but I'm not going to do them today. Um, so why develop an immersive ESOL assessment resource? Well, it's a fantastic formative assessment resource to improve success rates. If anyone's in the classroom, they're probably using some kind of uh, an EFL course book for um, ESOL. And where these EFL course books um, may be a great resource to be used, they're not directly relevant or related to the exams. Where we're providing a resource that teachers can use which are directly relevant to make sure and help boost success rates for your students. And that leads into that our material potentially being a prelude to simulation in summative assessment. So what we want, to, uh, you've got a lot of students who um, are not are massively great at written examinations, they don't like written examinations. We see simulation as a possible way for those students to be doing their learning in something which more mirrors what they're going to be doing in the workplace. So our kind of shared vision is uh, where learners all across the UK are going to be using simulation as another way to assess in the future. But a lot needed to change to actually do that. It's a flexible resource, something that can be used for front of class teaching, something that can be used for blended learning, flipped classroom, um, in computer rooms. It aids in developing real-world skills for ESOL students, like developing interview skills, and it boosts confidence and engagement. And here's a bit more of a video about all of the simulations. In terms of the scenarios we've got at the moment which are coming out, attending an interview, into, it's entry level one, attending an interview level, uh, entry level three, sorry, uh, home vocab and grammar, entry level one, home adjectives and comparisons, entry level two, travel office, doctor's surgery, interaction with school's parents evening, visiting a cafe. Hopefully you're seeing a lot of scenarios there which you think that would be fantastic for our learners to be learning in a scenario like this. And 
we are committed to innovating in assessment and we're developing new ways to do this in terms of supervisor mode, which is great for teaching students across lots and lots of geographies in the sense that you can actually go into the simulation with a student and help them out if they get stuck or interactive replay, where you don't just get a scorecard and see what the students have done, but you can see the exact uh, location of the students all the way throughout the simulation, which is, again, uh, gonna be great if and when our content gets used in summative assessment. And in terms of future developments, we really, really want to develop this with our partners. And we foresee things like access immersive programs being on the horizon, speech recognition. Our material at the moment is assessing um, reading and is assessing listening, but we want speech recognition to integrate with our material to actually monitor speaking as well. And AI integration, the kind of holy grail where if I'm speaking to someone, they will speak back to me based on what I've said. And I don't think this is, Decades down the line, I think it's months, if not years, down the line. So I will hand back to uh, Sarah Jane, but thank you so much. So you'll see from James's um, slides there and what he's been through is this is why it's a perfect partnership because James will get very excited about the technology and what's possible and then we'll have a conversation and go in practical terms what's actually going to work in the classroom, what's possible, what, what funding is available, how are we going to work through this. We won't even start talking about regulators just yet but in terms of what actually is feasible and how we apply that which is why working together um, we know that there's a long way to go, we know where we'd like to end up and we'd like it to be sooner rather than later but we know that that there are practical steps that need to be taken to, re to ensure that we're all there. We're also aware that one of the biggest challenges on using new technologies like this is funding. Um, so one of the um, exciting parts of this is that we're very privileged to be able to say, on the basis that of our commitment to ESOL learning, that we are able to offer this programme to all ESOL customers free of charge. So this programme is available now in its current form. So there are four scenarios available that we really would love your feedback on. So they're ready and they're, they're ready to use and trial with your, with your learners now. Um, and we'd love you to be as honest as possible. Um, one, because we've, we're still developing more scenarios, which um, I think Alex mentioned earlier, we're looking to launch in the, early in the new year. And we want to make them for you and as usable as possible, but also to inform future developments because we want to deliver what you guys need. So what your learners want, what, they're gonna, what they need help with the most, how this could benefit them. So we encourage you, when you do try it, please tell us everything. I'd rather, uh, someone will tell me off for saying this, but I'd rather receive 100 emails than one. So as much information as possible would be great. So um, in the coming few days, early next week, we'll, you'll receive an email from us to state um, that the platform's available and to say, if you would like access, respond to this email. And then we'll set you up on the platform and you can go and um, have, a, have a play either yourselves or um, show your learners straight away is ready to use straight away, which is very exciting. And it is those first four. And again, please, we'll also send you a link to feedback. Please do share your feedback because it will just help us to provide the best experience for your learners in the future. Um, so expect that email very shortly. And I hope you're excited as we are. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah Jane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.